Andes Mountains, cut through the tropical South American countries of Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru, are the homes of millions of Indian people who live in the highest land in the Western Hemisphere. But Lima, the capital of Peru, is not in the mountains. It lies on the strip of desert between the Andes and the Pacific Ocean. Lima was built 400 years ago when the Spanish conquerors, led by Francisco Pizarro, made the entire region of the central Andes a colony of Spain. Lima is a thriving city. Because it is in the hot lowlands, people live differently here than in the rest of our country. A railroad line connects the coastal desert with the highlands of the interior, where the largest number of our Indian people have always lived. To climb three miles up the steep wall of the Andes, the railroad from Lima must zigzag for nearly 200 miles. For most of this distance, the track runs over bridges or through tunnels. The train takes turn after turn around the high rims of deep mountain valleys. At high altitudes, the air becomes thin, and those of us who live in the lowlands find it difficult to breathe easily. Although the Indian villages are in valleys, they are high above the sea. Few trees grow in this cold climate, and homes are built of rocks and sod. The roofs of these huts are covered with dry mountain grass. Although all of the countries of the Middle Andes are in the tropics, as we go higher and higher above sea level, it becomes colder and colder. Within a few hours, our train is in a setting very different from Lima and the coastal desert. In the mountain ranges of the central Andes are plateaus and high valleys. Centuries before Columbus discovered America, Millions of Indians had their homes in these highlands. These people were governed by a family of kings called the Incas. And today, the entire region is known as the land of the Incas. Many of those who still live on this hard, barren land are descendants of the ancient people who made up the Inca Empire. Because the Incas had no written language, we are not sure exactly how they built the palaces, temples, and terraces that now lie in ruins. This ancient civilization, which took centuries to develop, is famous for its remarkable architecture and its knowledge of agriculture. The Incas domesticated small South American animals called llamas and trained them to carry light loads. A thousand years ago, the Incas irrigated and farmed the steep slopes. Although they had no wagons or wheels, the Indians were able to move heavy stones and fit them together so closely that water still cannot trickle between them. The Inca roads were so well built that they are still used today. Yet in this same high region, where people have to get along with so little, there are rich deposits of gold and silver, copper and vanadium. The mines of Cerro de Pasco are so rich in copper that even the difficulties of mountain transportation have not stopped men from obtaining these resources that the world needs. the metal that goes into the making of pennies, wires for electric lights, telephones, and radio parts is dug out of the earth by the Indian miners of Peru. The Indians of Inca days not only used copper, 
but also combined it with tin to make bronze tools. The miners are superstitious and hope to drive away evil spirits by making offerings of coca leaves, which the Indians chew like gum. Many of the miners live in barrack-like buildings owned by the company. These are more modern than the mud and stone homes of Indian farmers. The wives of the miners prepare hot lunches for their husbands. Men who work hard in cold climates require hot, nourishing food. Unlike most Indian homes, these have stoves, ovens, and chimneys. Only men are allowed inside the mine, but the women also work very hard. We have a saying that in all Peru, there is no such thing as a lazy Indian housewife. When it is time for lunch, the pails are sent down the shaft to dugouts where the miners eat. These strong, hardy people who work at high altitudes do much to make life easier for others throughout the world. The copper ore is sent up to the surface as rapidly as it is mined. At the entrance to the mine shaft, freight cars are waiting to take the ore to the smelter for refining. The freight train follows routes around the mountains and through valleys. A thousand years ago, the same roadbed was an Inca trail. In a deep valley of the highlands is the city of Oroya. Here is a great smelting plant where copper ore is refined. Since the days of the Incas, this busy valley town, miles above the lowlands, has been a center of transportation between the highlands and the sea. Inside the smelter, the crushed ore is mixed with limestone and other minerals. This mixture is then melted by intense heat. The copper separates from the rock, and when the impurities are removed, the almost pure copper is poured into molds. After the hot metal cools, it is removed from the molds in the form of copper slabs. But only a small part of our highland people work in the mines and refineries. Almost all Indians live by farming and raising animals. The coarse wool of the yama is spun into yarn to be woven into cloth. Much of the material for the heavy clothing needed in this cold climate comes from the yama. Hundreds of thousands of yamas help provide the mountain people with food and clothing. The Indians who are counted the richest are those with the largest herds. Near the shores of Lake Titicaca, the Indians raise herds of cattle for meat and hides. So little grows on the land for the animals to eat that the farmers feed them lake grass that grows in the cold water. Titicaca, which connects landlocked Bolivia with Peru, is the highest navigable lake in the world. Wherever there is a valley that is protected from the cold winds that are forever blowing down from the snow-capped mountains, there are Indian homes and farms. Only a few hardy grains like wheat or barley can be grown in the cold climate of the high altitude farm. Most of the Indians are farmers, and almost nothing makes them want to leave their homes in the highlands. On their small patches of land, the Indians must work very hard to raise enough food for their families. If they are lucky enough to have a little left over, it is sent to market. In whatever they do, 
The farmers use the simplest methods. They winnow grain by letting the wind blow the light straw away from the heavier kernels. The principal food of all Indian families is chuno. To make chuno, potatoes are spread on the ground so that they will freeze during the cold night. In the daytime, the potatoes are broken up and allowed to thaw and dry in the sun. When this process has been repeated several times, the potatoes become chuno. The potato was first given to the world by Inca farmers. Every farming valley has its village. Because most Indians still do not read, stores display symbols. Drinks are sold at the sign of the corn husks. A bread basket means bakery. Village are like those of the farm. They are built without chimneys and windows. Because there are no trees to provide wood for fuel, families dry the manure of their yamas and burn it in their stoves. These mountain people have few comforts, and their homes are bare and simple. But in the lives of the Indians, there is a time for pleasure. When the Spaniards conquered the people of the Middle Andes, they brought Christianity with them. Holy days are observed by religious ceremonies. When the religious procession is over, the fiesta begins and everyone joins in fun and merrymaking. Concha shells provide the same kind of music that was enjoyed by Inca kings. The dances are Spanish in origin. One fiesta ends, the Indian looks forward to the next feast day, for these events are almost his only recreation. Every Indian likes to make a trip to market. The yama will help the farmer carry his produce and few belongings. If the yama thinks the load is too heavy, he hisses and even spits. The yama has weak and slender legs, but over the years, the Indians have trained the animal to carry loads of 50 or more pounds. When a farmer makes a journey to market, he brings back first-hand accounts of all that he sees. The Indians do not have newspapers or radios as we do in Lima. Passing a town along the way, the farmer sees a schoolhouse being built. By working dry mountain grass into wet clay, a mixture known as adobe is made. The adobe is packed solidly into molds. The frames are removed and the adobe blocks are left to dry and harden in the sun. Even though they eat lots of potatoes and corn, Indians work too hard to become fat. Because they must carry heavy loads, the Indians have developed broad shoulders and strong backs.
the calves of their legs are larger and more powerful than those of almost any other people. The Indians have lived in the thin air of the high mountains for so many generations that their chests have become large and their lungs big enough to hold all the air needed to do hard work. If the Indian lives in a remote village, trip back and forth to market may take several days. Usually the only communication between one Indian village and another is by means of the ancient Inca trails that lead through the mountain passes. Sometimes one sees a farmer rich enough to own oxen. At harvest time, these beasts help with the work by trampling the straw until the kernels of wheat are loosened. The most important city in the highlands is Cusco. Cusco was once the capital and center of the Inca Empire. Even today, most of the churches and public buildings of Cusco stand on the stone foundations of ancient Inca palaces and temples. There are stone blocks remaining in old walls and foundations that weigh as much as 50 tons. Although the Incas lacked cement, their stone masonry has withstood centuries of wear and the shocks of countless earthquakes. Farmers go to market with their herds of llamas as much to see and talk with people as to trade. Farmers arrive from valley towns miles and miles away. Loads too heavy for their yamas are carried by the Indians themselves. Sunday is market day in Cusco. Every type of produce grown on Indian farms and all kinds of articles made at home are placed on sale. Before purchasing pottery, the Indian housewife tests its quality in her own way. The square at Cusco is not as noisy as most marketplaces. A merchant is happy if he makes only a single sale in a day. If no sales are made, he is satisfied to have had the pleasure of meeting and talking with people. The least busy of the traders are those who sell clothing. Most Indians make their own. Sandals made from old automobile tires are a luxury. The three and a half million Indians living in the barren highlands of Peru lead difficult lives. Whether they work in mines, farm their lands, or tend their herds, only by long hours of toil are they able to gain enough to supply their meager needs. Although Peru is a tropical country, the climate in our highlands is cold and severe. But in spite of all difficulties, men still live and work in the land of the Incas, the high plateaus and mountain valleys of the Centro Andes.